What if we told you that you could save time at HHN 30 by doing the houses in a certain order? Hey, Pew Crew, welcome back. If you're new here, on this channel we talk about all things theme parks, including updates, news, and even tips and tricks for your next theme park vacation. So if that's something you're interested in, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. We just got back from HHN 30 opening weekend, and it was a blast. We had a really good time. But while we were down there, we were doing a little bit of homework and a little bit of experimenting what we're trying to do is find like the optimal route or order that you can do the houses in. So what we're gonna do in today's video is talk about what we figured out and give you a game plan for going to HHN so you can make the most out of your nights. Before we fully dive into it, we did wanna say that we think it kind of depends and it depends on whether or not you have Express Pass. Yeah. Um, it's really gonna change the way that you move around the park. We actually had somebody without Express Pass who did some experimenting for us and their experience was totally different. So how we're gonna break down the video today is we're gonna talk about the route with Express Pass and then follow that up with out Express Pass. Um, we think you should maybe listen to both because it could entice you to perhaps buy an Express Pass yeah. or give you a little bit of insight into like crowd flow and how that's gonna go throughout the night. Regardless of if you have express passes or not, we're gonna assume that you have access to Stay and Scream yeah. because Stay and Scream is by far the biggest time saver at Halloween Horror Nights. And honestly, it acts as an extra express pass. Yeah, or three. Seriously, <laughs> if you don't have access to Stay and Scream, that is something that you should really consider. Like, you get that by having access to the parks or you can purchase the Scream early ticket Either way, we think it is almost a necessity so that you can get the most out of your nights. And if you do have Express Pass, we're gonna recommend that you start in the Springfield Stay and Scream. Before we go any further, it is worth noting that Stay and Scream is a little different this year. Normally it's Springfield or Finnegan's, <laughs> and this year it's Finnegan's or uh, this stuff back here. And <laughs> this stuff back here is still technically Springfield, except you have to make a few decisions. You do enter right there where the Marathon of Mayhem show is, so Central Park, yeah. and after they check your ticket, that is where the first decision has to be made. Um, you'll, there'll be two paths. If you go right, you're gonna be queued up for Beetlejuice and Haunting of Hill House, but you're not gonna have access to Duff Gardens. If you go left, you're gonna have access to Duff Gardens and all that fun stuff, <laughs> but the only house that you are technically queued up for at the time of opening is Welcome to Scary. With Express Pass, we do recommend that you queue up for Welcome to Scary first. Yeah, so this was our game plan for Saturday night and we had a lot of success with it. So just because Welcome to Scary is the only house that's open, don't worry too much about that. We got through that house pretty quick and we didn't even have to use Express Pass. But then we were able to hit up Wicked Grove and Puppet Theater and we didn't use Express Pass there either because those wait times were so low. So we had gone through three houses in less than an hour without burning a single Express Pass. Now, now, I know what you're thinking. Oh, you've got Express Pass, why aren't you burning it? And that's a fair point, but we are trying to make the most of our nights at HHN. There's no reason to burn it when the wait times are so short. Seriously, like we said, less than an hour, three houses, down and we were recording and doing all that kind of stuff. So that takes a little bit of extra time. We like to save those express passes because two of those three houses are our favorite houses of the event. Mm -hmm. So maybe if we have a little bit of time left later, we can go back there and hit those houses up for a second or third time. <laughs> Now, one thing to note, when we went through Wicked Growth and Puppet Theater yeah. after we went through Scary, the wait times both said at least 30 minutes, like yeah. on the posted board, yeah. but we waited like 10 or 15 minutes for each. Tops. So yeah, don't don't let those wait times scare you because they are going to be like fairly short first thing. From there, we made our way up to the ET area. <laughs> so over there where Hill House and Beetlejuice are located, and that is where we burnt our first two express passes of the night. 
those houses were each at like 75 or 80 minutes when we made our way up there. Yeah. And so, yeah, we definitely don't want to wait in a line that long. And those lines looked like they were probably that long. We ran through there and saw the line as we were walking through the express lane. And yeah, they were backed up for a pretty long while. After completing those two houses, you kind of have a decision to make. And that's the great thing about Express Pass. It allows you to make some decisions. We could either stay in the back of the park and hit up one of the shows, or we could go ahead and make our way through a couple of the scare zones and hit up the houses at the front of the park. What we chose to do was actually get some food and hit up one of the two shows that are at this year's event. We made our decision based on when those shows were starting, and we chose to go to the Halloween Nightmare Fuel Show. Yeah, so these shows do have different start times, like yeah. Tyler said. The Halloween Nightmare Fuel Show starts at 8, 9.30, 11, and 12.30, yeah. whereas the Marathon of Mayhem Show runs at 9, 10, 11, and 12. So it just worked better with our time frame to head yeah. back to the Halloween Nightmare Fuel Show because we had over an hour before the first Lagoon Show even started. Yeah, so we finished up, I would say it was like 7.15, so we had time to get food and then get in line. And that is something we wanted to mention real quick. If you're wanting to see one of the shows, you probably should get in line at least 20 to 30 minutes before the show is supposed to start. If you find yourself in the Halloween Nightmare Fuel Show, like we found ourselves, they are gonna make you exit right when you leave the stadium or yeah. whatever. So we just took that as a sign that we were supposed to make our way through the <laughs> Crypt TV scare zone yeah. and through the Seek and Destroy scare zone as we are making our way up to the houses that are at the front of the park. So at this point, when we got up there, the wait times for the houses at the front of the park were pretty high. I think Icons, which was the first one you come to, something like a 70 or 80 minute wait. Yeah. So we did just go ahead and burn our express pass on all of these houses. Um, we just hit them in the order that they are in as you walk through that scare zone, which is Icons, Revenge of the Tooth Fairy, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, Brides, and then what we actually did was we walked through the 30 Years of Fear scare zone just to walk back through it, like <laughs> so we could go through it the correct way so we could see all the yeah. signs and everything. <laughs> um, and then we made our way around like the Transformer building where we ended up hitting the Case Files Unearthed house last. Once we walked out of that last house, all we had left was two scare zones and one more show and it was only like 10.30ish. Yeah. So we just made our way through both of those scare zones, which was Lights, Camera, Action, <laughs> Eddie's Revenge, The Mouthful, and <laughs> then we went through Gorewood Forest, only to come back through Gorewood Forest and hit up the Marathon of Mayhem show at 11 o'clock. From our little timeline, you can tell that we got done with everything pretty early. Yeah. I think we finished up that last show around 11.30. Um, which means we had another three hours, essentially, to do whatever we wanted. Like, we had plenty of time. Yeah. We could go through houses a second time. And like we said, later in the night, after midnight especially, you start seeing those wait times dwindle where you don't necessarily need an express pass for especially, like, the not as popular houses. Yeah. We saw some of those wait times as low as 10 to 15 minutes. This is also the perfect time to go ahead and get you some food or in our case more food because <laughs> honestly the wait times for the food that kind of eclipsed the houses at some points like yeah. we waited 35 minutes for a food item that we won't be getting again uh we're talking about you the jacked up slider uh whatever the jack slider whatever it whatever. was it was it Ugh. was bad and we heard that these smoked wings or even worse. I don't know how that was possible, but <laughs> yeah. it, it just wasn't very good. But then you, like we said, well, you have all the time in the world. You can ride some rides, those are open, and the wait times are never very high. But what we ended up doing was we ended up going through like five more houses at yeah. the end of the night. And if we hadn't been recording and doing all that, because like, that's something you got to keep in mind, we're recording this entire time, stopping, taking takes, like doing everything. With Express Pass, you just have so much time that I don't think it's ever going to be an issue. I don't want to say never. It shouldn't be an issue to get everything done in one night, and you should be able to do it pretty comfortably. 
Real quick, if you're enjoying this video, if you would go ahead and give it a thumbs up so you can help support our channel. Also, we wanted to give a quick shout out to Barry from Fort Myers. He's been sending us some letters and some postcards and even a shirt. And we just wanted to say thank you, Barry. Thank we you. really appreciate it. Now on to our non-express plan. Which we think is what really matters because like we said, there is just so much extra time when you have express. So we still recommend that you start in the Springfield Absolutely. Stay and Scream, but instead of heading to the Scary House, we recommend that you go right and head to Beetlejuice and Hill House. Now, it is important to note that later on, they will make you choose which yeah. house you wanna go to, and we recommend that you go to the Haunting of Hill House first. Yeah, so the reason that we are gonna recommend that is because every time that we've looked at the app, and we've even looked at it tonight, yeah. Haunting of Hill House is a higher wait time. You're trying to make the most out of your time there. So we're gonna suggest getting the one that's gonna have the highest wait time out of the way first. After that, we do recommend that you make your way through Beetlejuice because yeah. first of all, you're right there yeah. at the entrance and that house has had some high wait times yeah. in the first few nights. Yeah. So we recommend that you get that out of the way immediately after Hill House. Yeah, so one trend that we are sort of noticing is that there are four houses that are having the highest wait times, and that is Hill House, Beetlejuice, Icons, and Wicked Growth. And we think <laughs> Wicked Growth might be the house this year that has the longest wait time, and that's because of its popularity so far in the event. We think overall Hill House will probably have, Hill House and Beetlejuice, will have the most consistently high wait times. Right. But Wicked Growth is one of those ones that we think could get up there quite a bit. With that being said, if you don't have Express Pass, we do think it's probably smart to go ahead and hit up the back of the park. And we would start with Wicked. Um, yeah. Wicked Growth, because it is going to get more and more popular as the event goes on. And you're already back there, so the crowds that are entering like we said, if you've done Stay and Scream, you've got a little bit of time built in there, and the crowds are probably hitting up the front of the park first. Right. So hopefully you can hit those houses in the back before those daytime crowds, or the nighttime crowds, I guess <laughs> you can say, make their way back there. After you finish Wicked Growth, go ahead and hit those other two houses. Those wait times haven't been as bad, especially right. scary. Um, it tends to be on the lower side. So in our opinion, we would do Wicked, Puppet, and then scary without express pass we think you should be able to finish up those houses by 8 30 to 9 o'clock we're not going to guarantee anything because it could be way quicker or it could be later just depending on the crowds but that was the experience of the friend that we had right. um they were done at like 8 35 is what they said with those five houses and so then there is a decision to make if you're prioritizing the houses you should probably just go ahead and make your way up front and try to get those houses knocked out. Right. But if you're trying to get the most out of your nights, we probably would recommend hitting up a show at this point. Yeah. Get you some food, take a little break, hit up a show, choose one or the other. Um, and by the time you get done with that, you should start seeing some of the crowds maybe moving out a little bit. One of the trends that we've noticed, not only in this event, but events past between 8 and 10.30, uh, maybe even up to 11. The crowds and the wait times are as high as they're going to be throughout the night. You're yeah. going to see some pretty high wait times. So we like to take those opportunities to see some shows because after midnight, 11.30 to midnight, those wait times drop drastically. Yeah. We're talking 75 minutes to 25 minutes or you know 80 minutes to 15 minutes. I mean, we've seen it all. We've been trying to track on the app. We watched the app while we were there. We've watched the app since we've been home. There's just, there's ways to save some time and do everything. And what we like to do is hit up some shows and try to get to that midnight hour. We do have to emphasize that this also depends on when you're there. And we're not just talking about the crowd, but some nights the event only runs till one o'clock. So you probably don't have that luxury of going to a show if you're wanting to see all 10 houses, you probably don't have that luxury of going to a show and waiting out the crowds. You're probably just gonna have to make your way up to the front park and start getting in those lines. And of course, like we always say, we would prioritize what we wanna see first yeah. and then save the other ones for later. 
Another trend that we have noticed is that the houses that, other than Beetlejuice, the two houses that are making <laughs> a return from HHN Lite, HHN 29.5, whatever you want to call it, um, those houses have had some of the lowest wait times. Yeah. Uh, we've seen those houses both at 10 minutes. Um, and so you can kind of wait on those. Mm -hmm. We're not telling you to do it. We're just saying if we were putting one off, thinking that maybe we could make like a quick last minute run through of something. Yeah. It's those two houses. But anyways, back to the route. Like we said, we're gonna focus on getting the houses done because that is the main draw for the event. Um, we want you to make the most out of it, but say you only have one night and you wanna get all 10 houses done, we would finish up in that back area, like we said, yeah. and then we would make our way through our first two scare zones, which would once again be Crypt TV and then Seek and Destroy while we're on our way up to Icons, Tooth Fairy, and Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Once we get up there, we would do things a little bit differently here. We would probably personally hit up like Texas Chainsaw Massacre and then maybe even skip over and go to Case Files Unearthed. And the reason that we would do that is because Icons has had one of the longest waits of any of the houses in the parks. Yeah. So we would try to give that a little time to cool down. Maybe some of the crowds move from the front of the park to the back of the park and that way you can save some time not wait in line and maybe see some of those other houses also you notice that we didn't say brides and tooth fairy and that's because like we just said we feel like you can kind of put those off and have those in your back pocket because those wait times have been so low so far throughout the event so of course we would then finish up the night by hitting up those last three houses which yep. are icons brides and tooth fairy yeah. but we did want to mention again that it's really important that you prioritize the yes. things that you want to see. So let's say for example, that icons is like your number one, like, oh my gosh, I want to see this house. We probably okay. wouldn't suggest putting that one off yeah. because we would really hate for you to get home and be like, man, Tooth Fairy was okay, but like, I really wanted to see icons and I ran out of time. While we are trying to give you the optimized or the best route to make the most of your nights, it's always important to have a priority list because you never want to leave and be like, wow, I missed out on this house because I was trying to save time doing these other things. You probably have noticed that in this route, we haven't hit up shows and we're still missing three of the scare zones. Yeah. But that's the thing, like without Express Pass, it can get kind of away from you. Um, luckily, the nights that we were there and Saturday night was kind of busy, but our friend was able to hit up one of the shows all the scare zones and all 10 houses. The way that he did it was very similar to what we've talked about. They didn't do any shows in the back in the beginning. Right. They made their way up front and they actually hit up Texas Chainsaw Massacre, Case Files on Earth, and that sort of like resembled what we were seeing in the app and what we've continued to see in the app, like the wait times. His strategy was basically to hit some of the houses in areas with lower wait times in hopes that the houses that are more popular and get those higher wait times would drop a little bit so he's not wasting time waiting in line and he's actually doing things during his time. The reason this strategy works and it was kind of proven to us at HHN 29 when we saw people waiting in line for Stranger Things for like two hours yeah. and then <laughs> they would miss out on like four houses yeah. when if they would have went through those four houses in the time that they were waiting for uh, Stranger Things, they could have ended up hitting Stranger Things late at night. Because if you're in line before the event stops, you're going to get to go through the house. That's kind right. of the rules. So that's always something to keep in mind. Like you can get in line later in the night for something, even if there's only like 15 minutes left till close. If the wait says 20 minutes, they typically are going to allow you to go through that house. So back to the friend, what he then did was after he hit those two houses, he said he hit icons and then hit brides and tooth fairy and it was only like 12 30 so he actually had time to run back there and hit that last he said it's just before 12 30 but he yeah. was actually able to run back there and get to that last showing of the halloween nightmare fuel um and then after that he got him some food and hung out a little bit went through some scare zones and cleared all that off the agenda and he had a great night i mean he was there in stay and scream early and he was there until the event closed and that's sometimes what it's going to take if you don't have Express Pass. You can see the big time difference that you have at the end of the night, like all the extra time. 
an Express Pass and not have an Express Pass, but that's just how it goes. Another benefit to prioritizing the houses first is that the later shows do tend to be less yes. busy. Yeah. Um, so we mentioned that like for the Nightmare Fuel show, we got there like a little bit more than 30 minutes ahead of time. Yeah. And like there was plenty of room for us to get in, but we definitely weren't the first people. No. But with that last show of the night, you don't have to get there quite as early to get a seat. Yeah, they said that it wasn't even full at the last show. Yeah. so. That's another way to save some time. If you're not waiting in line for 15 minutes for that, you could be waiting in line for a house or food yeah. using that 15 minutes. So before we finish up with the video, we did want to say that we will put the exact route that he took and what we're sort of seeing with, we may change one thing because what we're seeing in the app yeah. with wait times, um, because we think he could have saved a little bit of time in one other spot. And then we'll give you our route that we used to be done with all the houses with Express Pass by like 11.30. Um, we'll just put those in the description down below the video. But with that, guys, we are going to wrap up today's video. Leave us a comment in the comment section and let us know how many words rhyme with root. <laughs> if you enjoyed this video, give us a thumbs up. Scoot. You can hit that subscribe button and Boop. turn on that bell notification so you get an alert every time we post a new video. Thanks for watching. Scoot. <laughs>